Today we are starting our winter polar bears and I'm very excited to get to have this opportunity to walk you guys through drawing and painting our polar bears, but through YouTube. So you are going to be watching this video and following along with me. And of course, if you need help, there is still awesome people in the room to help you out like my intern and our sub. So let's go ahead and get started. Remember the first thing is on our paper, we need to know who is the artist, who they belong to what class and where they sit in the art room. So on the back of the paper, we are going to start off by writing our name. That is our very first thing we always write. So you will write your name. Underneath that, you're gonna write your teacher's name and that will be up on the board for you. Our substitute, our lovely intern will help you out. And then the last thing we write is the color of the table that we sit at and the number. So take a pause on the video right here. Let's get everybody at this point ready to go. On all of our papers, we should have our name, our teacher, and our seat color and number. All right, so now that we have all had a chance to fill out our papers, make sure you take your paper, you're gonna flip it over to the blank white side, and you are going to need a messy mat today. You're going to get a mini messy mat for your project. I have a large messy mat for mine today, but you only need a mini, because we're only gonna go just a little off the edges. And we are using tempera cakes. These are called tempera cakes, I guess because they kind of look like a little bite of cake, or you might even hear them called tempera pucks, like a hockey puck. And we're only using three colors today. We are using the cool colors. We talked about this earlier this year, and I hope you remember. Let's all start looking at our paint palette. What are our three cool colors? Purple, green, and blue. Awesome job. I'm actually going to go ahead and take away all of the other colors and you may see your tray look the same because we don't want any of these other colors here today. We just need our blue, our green, and our purple, our cool, cold colors. The next thing before we jump into painting is we are going to take our pencil and we're going to draw just a few little spots on our picture. We're going to create that piece of ice that our polar bear is standing on. So I'm going to find the middle of my page using my finger. I'm going to go from the top to the bottom, look for about the middle, side to side, look for the middle, taking my best guess. And then I'm going to scooch my finger, ready, just down just a little. I'm going to draw a line across. It can be a little wiggly wobbly to start my snow and my ice. And then I'm going to bring my finger down a little bit lower, but I'm not all the way at the bottom. I'm not really close. I'm about from my like top of my finger to the base of my finger. And I'm gonna put a little wiggle here as well. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Don't want it super duper wiggly because we are going to be painting. So you should have your top space, your ice, and your bottom space. We can go ahead and take our pencils, put those away back into our pencil baskets, get them off our space and out of the way because we're ready to move on to painting. You are going to receive and get some water, paint brushes, your towels, as well as, of course, our cool colors from our temper cakes. I want you to watch me first before you start painting so you know where to paint. We are going to leave our ice white, but we are gonna fill up our bottom space and our top space, our sky and like our water, reflecting the colors in the sky with these cool colors. We're kind of looking at the things in the like winter sky, like the Northern lights that show these colors. All we have to do to use our temper cakes, we take our wet brush, we swirl it lightly on top. Think about a little ballerina dancing on top activating our color, making sure I'm keeping my paintbrush nice and having a good hair day. And once I do that, you can see I'm starting to get some color on my brush. So when I start to paint with my tempera cakes, I have the color from my tempera cake now on my paper. I'm gonna fill in first some spots of blue, anywhere below my line and anywhere that I would also like above my line. I'm gonna put a few little spots of blue in the sky. So I'm gonna fast forward, do this a little quickly. And there we go. Now I wanna start adding in some greens. I need to take my paintbrush. 
I need to rinse it out. And of course, don't let him be cold when he comes out of the bath. Make sure he is dried off on our towels. Now I can activate my green and I can start painting in some green in my picture as well. And then I'm gonna start adding in purple. Make sure my brush is cleaned off, dried off, and now I can finish filling in my white spots with purple. Again, remember to leave this center spot for your ice white. And there we go. We have now finished painting in our background for our polar bears. Remember, you should have the top part, the bottom part painted, and our white snowy ice. So we have the sky and the water is reflecting the colors from the sky. Now, some of you may wanna go back in and add in some more of your other colors and finish filling in them to make them nice and beautiful and bright. And that is absolutely okay. Finish adding in any little details that you would like to make your combination of your cool colored sky. And then we're going to carefully take this to the drying rack and we're gonna turn in our messy mats. So we have a clean space to work because next we're gonna start drawing our polar bears. So let's go ahead, get these on the drying rack. So the first step, we are gonna be creating a large rainbow arch all the way up and around to create the back of our polar bear. The way I like to do this is I put my hand down on the paper and I wanna remember that my rainbow arch is big enough to go over my hand. We don't want a teeny tiny little polar bear. So I put my hand down first, pencil over on the side. It's gonna go up and around and come back down. This is the back for our polar bear. Go ahead, draw in your first line, your curving line, this rainbow shaped line to make the back of the polar bear. And you may pause the video as needed to let everybody get caught up. The next step is we are gonna create the circle for the head of the polar bear. Just like before, we don't want a teeny tiny little polar bear with a teeny tiny little head. We wanna make sure that our circle is big enough to add in some details. So I'm creating a Bigger circle, it's about the size of like my fist, even bigger. So make sure that circle is big enough to add in some details. Like our next thing, we're gonna add in another circle inside of the polar bear's face. And you can see this circle is a little bit lower. It's not quite in the middle. We need to leave room for the eyes. All right, after we have added in this circle, I'm gonna put two smaller circles to remind me this is where the eyes are gonna go and an oval inside the nose on the snout for the actual nose of our polar bear. So we have the larger circle is the snout and this oval will be the black nose. Now we're missing something up top. What could it be? Oh yes, our polar bear is a bear and it does have ears. I like to do one curve with a little curve on the inside and same thing over here, another curve and another curve. Make sure you're not drawing teeny tiny ears. To create the bottom feet of our polar bear, we're gonna start off first by creating now a smaller arch in between the two legs. So we will have one leg, two legs. Go right below your head, add in a smaller arch, a smaller rainbow. For our two feet, our paws of our polar bear, we're gonna put in, are you ready? One taller arch with some toes. And let's do the same thing over here. Another taller arch with some toes. So now our polar bear is standing, staring right at us. And it has its two front paws showing and that gap where we can see the legs separate. I'm also gonna add in one curving line so we know this is the chest of the bear. We can see where the chest would be and it's looking right at us. 
Now, we are gonna be using two different tools to go over our outlines. Today, since we did do our backgrounds and we've drawn out our polar bears, we might be getting close to time to clean up. If it's time to clean up today, that's okay. We can put these in our folders for next time. If you have a little extra time in class today, we can go ahead and use our Sharpies to outline a couple of our smaller details, like coloring in the eyes, if you wanna leave a little white spot for a twinkle in the eye, you can, or you could color it in totally black. So if you like a little twinkle, leave a little twinkle. If you wanna color it in black, go ahead and color it in black. I'm also gonna use my Sharpie to outline the nose. And I do like to leave a spot of white on the nose to make it look like the nose is wet and it's, it's shiny, it glistens when the light from the moon or the sun hits it. So when I color, I like to draw in another little oval, but I'm not gonna color in that little oval. I'm gonna color around it. So now I have a nose with a nice shiny spot. And then our last thing, these ears are a little small. We're going to outline over our ears with our Sharpie. All right, if this is where your class needs to stop today, that's okay, make sure Sharpie lids are on. They are going back into the basket and these are gonna go in your folders for next time. If you have time to move on today, we can go ahead and start our next step, which is outlining with our oil pastels. If you don't get to this step today, we'll pick it up next time. So here's what we're gonna do with our black oil pastel. I'm gonna finish tracing all of my lines that are still showing with pencil with my black oil pastel going all the way around and i am pushing down a little bit hard with these we want these to be nice creamy thicker lines going over my paws that little curve between the feet the curve of the other foot and don't forget that big rainbow arch for the back of the polar bear. And I'm just doing my best to stay on my pencil lines. If you went off a little bit like I did right here, just trace back over it, it's okay. Now, something really cool about our pastels is they can smudge to help make some shadows that are gonna make our polar bears look realistic. So everybody get yours outlined first, pause here. Once everybody's ready, I'll show you the next step. All right, so now that we're all ready, here's the fun part. Watch me first. We're gonna take our finger, one finger, we don't need to make all of our fingers dirty, just one, and check out what happens when I go from the outside of my polar bear's back and I push that pastel in. It's creating some shadows on my polar bear. Our polar bear is white, but they do have shadows on their fur. It helps it make more, it makes it more realistic. Like the sun is shining and there are parts where you'll see light and you'll see shadows. Like you can see the shadow of my hand because the light is shining on it. So our polar bear is gonna have some shadows too. I can do the same thing on the little chest of my polar bear, the feet, of my polar bear, I could run my finger over it. This time I'm just going in that curving shape of my polar bear. We can do the same thing on the little toes. Now we don't wanna go crazy and turn our entire polar bear gray. We do wanna leave some white spots. So when we get up here to the face, I'm just gonna rub around in a circle and same thing on the nose, a little bit here for the snout. Can we do a little on the ears? Absolutely. And now, check it out, we have a polar bear that looks more realistic, but it needs to be cut off of our paper. So you're also gonna need some scissors today. Before we get scissors out, check your fingers. If you are nice and dirty, like mine, only one or two little spots, you can see where I was rubbing and holding, that's okay. No reason we should have it all over our hands. If you're rolling the pastel in your hands, you are gonna start melting it all in your hands and making a mess. Remember to use it like it is a pencil and we're only dirtying up that one finger and maybe a couple others just from holding it. So get your hands clean, get a wipe, wipe them down, and then let's start cutting out our polar bears. So I'm gonna use my scissors. I'm gonna start first by cutting out the big arching back of the polar bear. And then the only other spot we need to cut out is this little empty space between the two feet.
And now check it out. We have a realistic shadowed polar bear. Where should we put these scraps? Trash monster, you are correct. Make sure you go feed these to the trash monster. He's gonna be so happy to eat your scraps today, but don't feed him your polar bear. It is time to bring back out those now dried backgrounds from last time. And we are going to be adding our polar bear onto the ice. It's gonna be standing on the ice. But before we glue it down, we want our ice to have a little bit of that icy look. Just like we went over our polar bear with our black pastel, we're going to use a blue crayon to add in some blue shadows on our ice. I like to take my blue crayon first and I'm going to outline over those pencil lines we made to start our ice. Now I like to turn my paper when I work just so it makes it easier so my hand's not having to bend and twist in weird directions. So you might see me turning my paper when we work and if that's better for you, do that too. Now, I pushed down kind of hard when I was outlining those two lines, but what I like to do next involves lightly coloring. Don't push down super hard. Let's just put a couple little zigzaggy scribbly lines on our white ice to make it look like it is icy. I'm not gonna color it all in blue. I am gonna leave some white space. So now I have my sky, my outlines for my ice, my icy details, and next up, we'll be attaching on our polar bear. We're gonna be using liquid glue to attach on our polar bear, and remember, when you get your liquid glue, it should be closed up. You should see the little tip looks like this, a white piece at the top, but it's not glue, it is the stopper. Remember to take your fingers, you're going to twist your orange cap until you see the stopper go down. You can check to hear your glue breathing, can you hear it? He's ready to go. I'm going to take my polar bear on the back. I'm going to do dot, dot, not a lot. Now you can see an other drawing I had on here. So if you messed up and had flipped over any drawings on the back, no problem. We're gonna be hiding those. I'm gonna scatter some dots around the back of my polar bear. And I'm not gonna go too, too close to the edge. Remember when we start to push things down onto paper with glue on them, the glue will try to smush out. So now that I've got some dots, dot, dot, not a lot, meaning not a lot of glue. Are these a lot of dots of glue? Yeah, but is it too much glue? No, look at this, I can tip it and shake it and those glue dots aren't moving cause it is glue raindrops, not glue puddles. Take your polar bear, flip it over, match him up so he's standing on the ice and lightly, we don't wanna get our hands dirty again, lightly just press your polar bear onto the paper. Your liquid glue will do all of the grabbing and holding for you once it dries. You just wanna lightly make sure it is on the paper. So now we have our polar bear standing on our ice. The final thing is yes, we have this beautiful sky and this really awesome shade of polar bear, but He's in the Arctic and it is probably snowing. We're gonna add some snowflakes to our picture as well. I'm gonna use a white oil pastel and up in the sky above my polar bear, I could add in some snow balls by just drawing in little white circles or I could even draw some snowflakes. I like to start off with an X a line that goes down the middle and a line that goes to the side. Now, sometimes your snowflakes may show up brighter on certain colors and lighter on others. That's okay. So I'm gonna add in some snowflakes, some little snow dots around my polar bear. Now down here in the water at the bottom, I could also add in some snow dots and some snowflakes since our snow would be falling all over the place. And you might wanna even make this look like water by adding in some wiggly white lines to make it look like the ripples in the water. So I'm gonna add in these like spaghetti lines to my water as well as some snowflakes. And check it out, we have a beautiful winter polar bear ready to take on that nice freezing cold in the Arctic. Once you have it drawn on with all the snowflakes, you have it glued on there, let's put these on the drying rack since there is liquid glue on our artworks and we don't wanna risk it getting stuck in the folder. Good news is remember, you already put your name, teacher's name, seat color number on the back last time, so you are good to go. So let's get these on the drying rack and awesome job today, guys. Super proud.